I understand that a man named Joe Horse has written a novel about the show man. I've not read it, of course, but I know that it must be terrible. And, and she said, and I've heard that you have bought the movie rights. And she said, I can't believe that you would ever make this movie about the show Hammond. It's just, it is such a terrible thing to do. And Coppola wrote back and said, yes, you know, William, that I have the highest regard for you. And always have that. And he said, uh, and I did buy Mr. Gorges, the rights to Mr. Gorges' book option. But, and uh, you certainly could talk me out of making this movie. But if you did, the rights would go back to Mr. Gores. Then he would sell it to some other producer. And you could perhaps talk that producer into not making the movie. Then Mr. Gores would get his rights back and he would sell it to another producer. He said eventually he would sell those rights to a producer who doesn't give a damn what you think. Isn't it better that I make this movie holds you in the highest regard than have a producer make this movie who doesn't give a damn about you sincerely. <laughs> <laughs> then he made the movie. Now Joe, I understand you are undertaking a special project involving Sam Spade. And can you tell us about this and how you came about to, to do it? Oh yeah, I am just finishing up. Oh God, let me finish up. Uh, <laughs> a novel called Spade and Archer that is a prequel to the Maltese Fall. Um, it's, the, the thing started out in 1999, I wrote Joe again, but I met her just once, and, and her daughter, who's, who's very active in all of this. And, um, and I wrote and said, I, I, I would like to do a prequel to the Maltese Fall. And Joe uh, didn't want to do it, and her daughter wrote me back and said, uh, we just we just don't think it would be a good idea. We don't want to put on my grandfather's name uh, the way that we feel it should. And so, so it died. And then about let's see, February two two years ago or three years ago, uh, the family was up here for a thing at the Civic Center in at the Moscone Center and. Joe said, uh, Joe Hammond said, Joe, come here, I want to talk to you, and we went to sat at a table. And she said, I had a dream last night. She said, I dreamed that he wrote that novel. And she said, I suddenly thought when I woke up, why in heaven's name did I oppose Joe writing that novel? And, and she said, I would like you to write a sequel to the Maltese Falcon. And I said, uh, Joe, I can't write a sequel. She said, why not? And I said, they're all dead. <laughs> At the end of the book, they're all dead. <laughs> I said, I could write a prequel. I want to write a prequel. And I want that prequel to try and address all of the things in the Maltese Falcon that had fascinated the hell out of me for all of these years. How did he meet Archer? How did he meet Ida? Uh, how did he meet uh, Effie? Why doesn't he like guns? Uh, all of these questions that, that flow through this novel, if you get hooked on it like I have been, um, I just wanted to address them and tell a story that covered starting out in 1921 and ending in 1928, which is the year that the Maltese Falcon starts. So I wanted to tell who Spade was, how he got to be, this kind of tough, hard, slippery character that he is. Nobody's born that way. What are the things that happened to him over the course of a number of years that gradually darkened his view of life, turned him into this hard nut that nobody can crack? So that's what I'm trying to do in the novel. Whether I succeed or not is another, another question, of course. Now, have you done more research? Have you talked about the kinds of research you've done? Well, I do a lot of research up in the Seattle area, Spokane area, um, because uh, in some talking away, 
Spade said that the, the woman who uh, inspired Iva worked in a bookstore in Spokane. So I put that in there. And I, I have it that Spade and Iva were an item in 1917, and then Spade went to war. And while he was gone, they swore on dying. While, while he was gone, she married Miles Archer. So, you know, this brings everybody in all at once. And, uh, and, and like that, things like that, a lot of research there, a lot more research in San Francisco, tremendous amount. Uh, research into um, uh, the Chinese immigrant situation, uh, paper daughters and paper sons, which is a fascinating, fascinating history, it's a chapter in San Francisco history of the, the people who could not, there was the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1879 that excluded all Chinese except clergymen, scholars, so a few other items. So, but people who were San Francisco, who were Chinese American citizens, but who had a wife in China, would go back there, and then they would come back and say, I've got six children. And, uh, and they might have three children, or no children, or six children. But those children would, of course, be American citizens because their father was an American citizen. So then they would sell the names of these supposed children to people who wanted to come and get into, get into America and become citizens, Chinese. And so they had a whole setup out on Angel Island to screen all of the immigrants who came from everywhere. But the Chinese were especially harshly treated. And uh, they had a whole set of trick questions and all sorts of stuff that went on. So things like this, yeah, I, I researched that. I researched the Greek community in San Francisco because of a uh, touch on that. And, uh, uh, the Chester Bergina, which was a, uh, Bergina is, is actually, in Greek is spelled with a V, but it's said with a V, so it's Regina. And uh, this was a chest made for Alexander the Great's sister over in the Balkans. And so, I mean, that comes in. It's not a central part of it. this kind of research. Yeah. So can you, uh, can you tell us the title again? Who the publisher is? Uh, Spade and Archer. It, it, Knopf will be the publisher, which was Hammond's publisher. Um, the family wanted Knopf to do it. Uh, and they, of course, gave me the permission to write the novel. I couldn't write it without their permission. They own all the rights to the character. And uh, so, um, and I'm hoping to finish the thing this morning. <laughs> and, um, so anyway, void praise will never be. <laughs> so we might see it sometime next year? Yeah, maybe? yeah. That's, they're sort of talking about fathers doing it. If possible. Well, I think we have about five minutes left. Um, I had a lot more questions, but maybe I should give you all a chance to ask any questions you might have for Joe or Christopher. First, I want to say, I kind of love the book, but after this discussion, I'm not so much more. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's, it's a very deep, interesting, intricate book, and the characters are so interesting. Yeah, I'm going to read it again. Yeah, yeah. And I read it I know, yes. She, I she, she's, she so was. Can I just repeat the question for the yeah. take here? So the question is why is Effie so sure that original Sonnacy is a good egg yeah. um, when she talks about it today? Well, Bridget is young and she is impressionable. And uh, this woman just got to her, she got to stay. She was a woman who got to people, got, got en enlisted their desire to help her. She came across as, as uh, soft and needful and 
afraid, and of course she's 